Philosopher Bernard Williams once wrote, man never made any material as resilient as the human spirit. It is this inner strength we use to go beyond what our body's limitations are, to break through the physical barriers of the world. Great power lies within the soul and the mind. It is power to face the uncertain. It is power to overcome the impossible. It is unflinching in the face of adversity. This is one such story. It is a story of courage, fortitude, and triumph. My name's Jennifer French. I was born in North Royalton, Ohio in 1971. Raised in an environment where outdoor adventures were encouraged, Jen French developed a love and respect for what Mother Nature had to offer. My dad uh, always was a big influence on being in the outdoors, and we would go for hikes as kids into our backyard. Um, and since that, it's just bled over to being a, a natural thing for us as we all grew up. Small hikes in the backyard were just the beginning for Jen. As I grew older, uh, we got into canoeing and um, skiing. So that ended up being more of the active outdoor sports, but that really didn't happen until we hit our teenage years. After graduating from high school, Jen went on to college in Massachusetts, where academics were not her only focus. And that's when I got much more involved in outdoor sports, living up in the Northeast. That's when I started to ski a lot more. Uh, we started to canoe. Uh, we used to fly to different islands and stuff so, and hike the mountains that were around, so I became much more um, outdoor influenced being up in the Northeast than I was living in Ohio. While at school, Jen met Tim French, who was as passionate about the outdoors as she was. The second date with my now husband, he took me windsurfing and uh, taught me how to windsurf. So that was my first introduction to any type of sailing vessel. At this time in her life, Jen and Tim seemed to have everything a young couple could want. They shared a love for the outdoors and a love for each other. But they didn't know how their lives would soon change. We had a ski snowboard vacation planned with a lot of friends uh, at a resort. And we all went up there uh, to have kind of a break, a nice weekend uh, getaway after the hustle and bustle of what had happened with the company. On March 13th, 1998, we uh, went out for a snowboard run I hit a patch of ice and I went down about a 30-foot embankment and hit a bunch of trees and uh, resulted in a bruised spinal cord at the C6, C7 level. The severity of the injury at the time was unknown, and thankfully, Jen had no recollection of the accident. And frankly, I don't really want to remember. There's little bits that I do remember. I do remember looking up, and it was a full moon that night, so I remember seeing the light of the moon. I had no idea what was going on. We got to the bottom of the run, and she, uh, everybody was there, ready to go back up to the condominium. And uh, I brought to their attention, well, Jennifer's not here. She has to be here somewhere. So uh, I went running back up the, uh, the ski slope looking for her and calling for her. And I heard her faint cry for help. I remember crying for help. Um, Tim was actually the one that found me. So I think it was much harder on him and the fact that he remembers everything that went on. When I got down there, I could tell she was seriously injured. Uh, I didn't know much about spinal cord injuries, but I knew enough not to, uh, to move her or touch her. I could see where she was kind of twisted up, and I asked if she could move her, her legs, and she couldn't. So at that point, I left her just the way she was and, and went for help. It took six guys and two snowmobiles to get me out of that embankment. And uh, very luckily, the emergency personnel knew how to take care of someone with a spinal cord injury. Jen was airlifted to the hospital, where doctors worked to stabilize her and relieve the swelling on her spinal cord. After months in the hospital, Jen was given a grim prognosis. I had a doctor sit down about a week later and said, this is the bottom line. You're going to be a quadriplegic for the rest of your life. You're not going to work, you're not going to recreate, you're going to live off of Social Security, and you better get used to it. Unwilling to accept what the doctor had told her, Jen decided not to let her disability dictate how she would live her life. I was back out doing sports before my one-year anniversary of my injury, which is a big 
it's a big milestone for a lot of people with spinal cord injury. My one year anniversary, I went back to the same ski resort and got on a sit ski and went out skiing. And I think that was a big emphasis for me to say I can get back on the horse again. And that was only the beginning for Jen. With her positive outlook and strong determination, she would begin to take on much, much more. Before my injury, I could do a thousand things. Now I can only do 995 of them. So why should I focus on those five and focus on the other 995 for the rest of my life? And once I get done with those, then I can focus on the five. Picking up where they left off, Jen and Tim started to enjoy the lifestyle they thought they would never have again. You know, canoeing is a fun sport because once you're in the canoe, it's all upper body. So you really don't require any part of your legs. There's a young lady that goes around the country doing adaptive paddling, and she's a quadriplegic. And they showed us how to adapt a canoe. Very simple, very inexpensive adaptation so I can get out and canoe like I did before. Really, all the work is on Tim's side, not mine. Tim getting the canoe in the water, and the paddles in the water and whatnot. I suppose I could have Jennifer sit in the back and steer, but you know that's that's my job. Uh, we have her do uh, the paddling up front. You know, we even have worked that out working as a team, where uh, we have a really great time going out there uh, canoeing. There's a lot of sports that, with just very simple adaptations. Being in a wheelchair, you can go back out and do it. And it's just a matter of figuring out what adaptations fit best to what your capabilities are. Her determination and desire gave her the strength to pursue another one of her passions. How are you? Good to see you. I participate in regattas. I uh, chair some committees for regattas. I'm involved in the St. Petersburg Yacht Club. I'm a, a volunteer in terms of helping people with disabilities get out and sail. Overcoming her own obstacles, Jen has become an inspiration, not only to other spinal cord patients, but to Tim as well. I'm proud of her. You know, I, I really am. Um, she's doing a lot of sailing. We do some sailing together. Uh, when we race in a, in a regatta where it's mostly just able-bodied people. And she's also racing with um, disabled sailing regatta. Sailing is a really extraordinary sport where people with disabilities, even quadriplegics, go out and compete against able-bodied teams. And we leave our wheelchairs and our prosthetics and our crutches on the docks and we go out and we're competitors like everyone else and that's the beauty of sailing is that you kind of leave that ground-based disability behind and you're treated equally out there sailing is just from a psychological standpoint it's very relaxing it's it's very exciting and competing um, it's very uh, technically and strategically oriented where you use your mind, not just your body. So there's a lot that goes into sailing that it's not just a physical sport. I don't know if you completely forget about your disability, but it helps you go to a different level than what you can on land. Another level Jen takes it to is below the sea. Scuba diving is more of a complicated sport. We tried it two times and got very frustrated. Um, but again, it's, it's a point of figuring out adaptations and what your capabilities are under the water. Jennifer has no, no fear of the going in the water. And um, I suppose if she doesn't have a fear, I certainly can't have a fear of going in the water. So I'm right there, right behind her. <laughs> it's kind of fun. It was really great to get back into a sport where, you know, only maybe a year ago you thought you couldn't do again. And uh, so it was really encouraging to be able to get back out and do a real open dive again. There are many obstacles that spinal cord patients face when diving. My feet happened to float, so we had to find a way to get weights on my ankles so my feet would be further down, but not too much weight where I couldn't swim. Corey Knowles, a certified scuba instructor, has been teaching spinal cord patients for three years. 
you know, their weight and their balance due to the fact that, you know, they, they don't have any muscle tone in their legs. They, their legs tend to float more. The, the amount of control they have over their lower body is, is basically uh, is tied into where their, where their disability lies. If they're, if they're a high quad type of disability, then they have very little control except in their, in their upper body. Whereas, you know, somebody that's a paraplegic has, has a little more control of their abdomen muscles and things like that. So it's a challenge from the standpoint that each person you put in the water, there's little different nuances about how you have to balance them and weight them. And, and you know, some of them you might have to put ankle weights on, just, just different things, just to get, the, get them adjusted so that they can do the, the diving. While under the water, Jen no longer has to focus on her disability. So I'm thinking the same things that any other scuba diver is thinking about. I think about swimming and current, I think about oxygen, I think about depth, I think about clearing my ears, I think about what's around me, I think about where's my buddy, I think about, you know, what are the neat wildlife that I get to see for the time that I'm under the water. It's a great feeling to feel that you're normal under the water and being able to swim with your arms and, and being able to get around underwater, it's, it's great. Although Jen had been active after her injury, her rehabilitation continued. After her physical therapy and the hospital was over, Jen began looking for a new form of rehabilitation. I was in search of something different. I came to the realization that there was no cure for spinal cord injury, but there has to be a different rehabilitation process. Nearly two years after the injury, her tireless research led her to the Cleveland Functional Electrical Stimulation Center and the stand and transfer system. And at the time, I, they hadn't implanted a woman yet. So they were very concerned about all the issues of implanting a woman versus a male. Along with the doctor's concerns of implanting a woman, there were also concerns about Jen's ability to feel sensation in her lower extremities. The surgeons feared that the shock from the electrodes would cause her too much pain. And I pushed them. And when you talk to the doctors, they laugh that I'm a persuasive person because I thought this was something very beneficial. And within two weeks of moving there, I was in surgery getting implanted. The seven hour long procedure involved the implantation of electrodes into Jen's lower back and the muscles of her upper legs. After the surgery, her painful recovery process began. To prevent the electrodes from shifting, Jen remained immobile for four weeks while her body healed. But for Jen, the advantages from the stand and transfer system far outweighed the pain and discomfort of the surgery. There's a lot of secondary benefits to this system. Fighting muscle atrophy, fighting pressure sores, um, contractures, uh, helping to fight osteoporosis. So there's a lot of secondary benefits to having this system. The implants and the standing system from Cleveland is really kind of a revolutionary side in what's called neurotechnology for people with any type of disability. The, the neurotechnology that's available really kind of changes the paradigm in this country of relying on surgeries and pharmaceuticals, but really looking towards rehabilitation. And I think it's a growing industry, and I think it has much benefit to uh, people with different types of disabilities. Daddy was really good until he looked at the radar. With her determination and lust for living, Jen has overcome what many would consider insurmountable odds. With advances in medical science, and wanting to fulfill a promise she made to herself. Jen French walked down the aisle at her own wedding. Life is a journey and we discover new things and it's always a fact of leaving your mind open of what's the next challenge that you have placed ahead of you. Like I had a hard time keeping up with her before the accident and I still have a hard time keeping up with her. It's really good for your water pump. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> you know, the thing about Jen is the fact that she has just a zeal for life and, and to get out and do things. And, and it's, you know, you wish that there was more people that had a, an ambition to, to take on and go out and enjoy life. Jean has, we have those two benches that uh, you might want to just, you know, hop on, try them out. People should get out of their homes and go enjoy life. And, and get out there instead of, of sitting and, and focusing on their disability 
They should focus on their capabilities instead. Jen uh, has a strong will to, uh, to always do their, her best at everything. There's just no stopping her. There wasn't any stopping her before. There's no stopping her now. Now right, remember, this is a smaller tank now. So you're gonna, when you're sucking on this tank, it'll uh, go a lot faster than every other any other tank you've sucked on. If you have a, a, a zest for life like like certain people like Jen does, then then you're gonna. There's not really much in your way as far as getting out and doing things you want to do. You know, whether you're able-bodied or or handicapped. You know, when you really put your mind to something that you want to do it, you can make it happen one way or another. We are our own wall, you know, that we throw up our own boundaries. You know, there's things that anybody can get out and do if they set their mind to do it. Whatever you set your mind to, you can get it done. I'm just thinking I need a little more angle on the, on the chair, because right now I have to jump up over this to get to that. Are you ready? Two, three. Everyone else. They can find their own niche, their own passion, their own enjoyment. Um, but if they find it, they should pursue it and not necessarily be discouraged that they can't get out and enjoy the sport that they've chosen. You're not bound to that chair anymore. You're free. Jen's injury does not stop her from making a difference in the lives of others. With an MBA, she works to help profit and nonprofit organizations emerge into new markets, profile, target customers, and create and build sales support systems. She has launched successful divisions in organizations such as Bombardier Capital and PC Connection Incorporated. Through TJF Consulting Incorporated, Jen freelances her talents and is also the co founder, president, and treasurer of Neurotech Network formerly STEM, a non-profit organization dedicated to increase awareness about neurotechnological devices. Jen is also involved in the Community Accessible Sailing Program, as well as a member of the U.S. Disabled Sailing Team. Her team, Sail La Vie, is raising money to compete in the 2008 Paralympic Games in Beijing, China. With her indomitable human spirit, and the love and support of her husband, family, and friends, and the advances of medicine and technology. Jen continues to break through barriers every day. She believes there will be a cure for spinal cord injuries in her lifetime.